His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa issued Decree 81 of this year, amending certain provisions of Decree 69 of 2004 on reorganizing the Ministry of Interior based on its minister's proposal and following the approval of the cabinet. The decree stipulates the following Article 1, a new clause number 4 shall be added to the first paragraph of the Article 1 of Decree 69 of 2004 on reorganizing the Ministry of Interior with the remaining clauses renumbered accordingly. The new clause reads for Under Secretary for Legislative Authority Affairs at the Ministry of Interior. His Majesty the King also issued Royal Decree 82 for this year, appointing an Under Secretary at the Ministry of Interior based on a proposal by its Minister and following the approval of the Cabinet. Article 1, Rashid Mohammed Abu Najma shall be appointed as Under Secretary for Legislative Authority Affairs at the Ministry of Interior. His Majesty the King also issued Decree 83 for this year, appointing the Secretary General of the Council of Representatives based on a proposal by the Deputy Prime Minister and following the approval of the Cabinet. Article 1, Mohammed Ibrahim Al Sisi Al Bainin shall be appointed as Secretary General of the Council of Representatives at the rank of Under Secretary. On behalf of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, His Royal Highness the Crown Prince Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, attended the opening session of the 79th session of the UN General Assembly at the UN headquarters in New York. His Royal Highness highlighted the pivotal role of the United Nations in uniting global efforts to advance international security and stability. The opening session featured speeches from several heads of states and delegates who stressed their country's commitment to supporting the international community's efforts to resolve conflicts and foster regional and global peace. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa arrived in New York to lead Bahrain's delegation at the 79th session of the UN General Assembly 2024 on behalf of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa. His Royal Highness was accompanied by an official delegation including the Minister of Foreign Affairs Dr. Abdul Latif bin Rashid Al Zayani, Minister of Finance National Economy Sheikh Salman bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, Minister of Oil and Environment Dr. Mohammed bin Mubarak bin Dana, Minister of Sustainable Development Noor bint Ali Al Khulayf and Bahrain's Ambassador to the US Sheikh Abdullah bin Rashid Al Khalifa along with senior officials. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa met with the President of the United Arab Emirates, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed Al Nahyan in Washington DC. His Royal Highness highlighted the strong historic relations between Bahrain and the UAE, which continued to underpin successful cooperation and partnerships in various fields. He noted Bahrain's commitment to deepening bilateral cooperation in line with the shared vision of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa and the President of the UAE. His Royal Highness conveyed the greetings of His Majesty the King to His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed, who in turn conveyed his greetings to His Majesty. The meeting reviewed ways to strengthen the Bahraini UAE partnership, discussed topics of common interest, and assessed the latest regional and international developments. The UAE's Deputy Prime Minister of Foreign Affairs, His Highness Sheikh Abdullah bin Zayed Al Nahyan, and senior officials also attended the meeting. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa met with the Prime Minister of the Hellenic Republic Kirkak Kyriakos Nikostakis on the sidelines of the 79th session of the UN General Assembly in New York. The meeting took place during His Royal Highness leadership of Bahrain's delegation on behalf of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa. His Royal Highness highlighted the continued growth of Bahrain-Greek relations and reaffirmed Bahrain's commitment to strengthening bilateral ties across various fields. His Royal Highness emphasized the importance of enhancing multi-sectoral cooperation and partnerships building on the agreements and memoranda of understanding established between both countries. Ways to further cooperation, regional and global developments and issues of common interest were also discussed. 
Bahrain's participation in the 79th session of the UN General Assembly stems from its firm vision of the importance of international cooperation and partnership based on fraternity, understanding the principles of good neighborliness and respect for the sovereignty of states. Under the leadership of His Majesty the King, Bahrain always sought to improve life for all humanity and build a better future for next generations through the initiatives it adopted or supported in various forums over the past years. We have more in this report. على تمسكها واحترامها لالتزاماتها الدولية المتمثلة في المحافظة على قوة واستقرار النظام الدولي واستمرار دوره في تحقيق السلم العام كما وأننا نشارك الأمم المتحدة رؤيتها الصائبة في التأكيد على أهمية العمل الجماعي الفعال لمواجهة كافة التحديات والأخطار. Since 1971, the Kingdom of Bahrain has participated in the sessions of the United Nations General Assembly and joined and interacted with various United Nations councils to emphasize through its continuous work the importance of international cooperation and partnership on the basis of fraternity understanding, the principles of good neighborliness and respect for the sovereignty of states. The Kingdom of Bahrain continues its firm approach under the leadership of His Majesty the King to develop cohesive and comprehensive partnerships between the United Nations and the Kingdom through a set of international commitments to achieve the highest levels of development based on equality and the full participation of member states in this high international system. <laughs> وترسيخا لقيم التعايش والتحاور بين الجميع دون عنف أو تعصب ومشاركة بفعالية في إرساء الأمن والاستقرار والسلام بين دول العالم وشعوبه the Kingdom of Bahrain is keen to have a positive and effective presence in various international meetings with high level participation. In 2005, His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister delivered the Kingdom of Bahrain speech at the 60th session of the United Nations General Assembly, during which he emphasized a number of Bahraini constants in supporting efforts to achieve security, stability and development, and strengthening international solidarity in the face of various challenges, and stressed before the international community the priority of cooperation at the bilateral and multilateral levels and addressing any political, economic or social issue directly to translate Bahrain's peace efforts. Bahrain <laughs> ولد ليستمر طالما وجد شعب طموح متحمس للتغيير الإيجابي the Kingdom of Bahrain supports the efforts of the United Nations through its diverse participation by exchanging experiences with United Nations delegations, organizing various forums and meetings, launching various pioneering programs, in addition to the Kingdom's active participation in a number of committees and councils, aimed at improving the reality of life for all humanity and building a better future for future generations. Building a prosperous and sustainable future in all parts of the world is one of the priorities of the Kingdom of Bahrain, who fully believes in the need to cooperate and develop a roadmap to face all challenges to pave the way for the desired future for future generations. During the UN General Assembly, US President Joe Biden emphasized the continuation of efforts to achieve a comprehensive ceasefire agreement in the Gaza Strip and prevent the war from expanding, adding that a diplomatic solution is still possible, that's despite the deterioration of the situation in Lebanon. Innocent civilians in Gaza are also going through hell. Thousands and thousands killed, including aid workers. Too many families dislocated crowding in the tents, facing a dire humanitarian situation. They did not ask for this war that Hamas started and set the conditions for a better future, including a two-state solution where the world 
where Israel enjoys security and peace and full recognition and normalized relations with all its neighbors, where Palestinians live in security, dignity, and self-determination in a state of their own. Israeli-Lebanon border remained displaced. A full-scale war is not in anyone's interest. Even if the situation has escalated, a diplomatic solution is still possible. In fact, it remains the only path to lasting security to allow the residents from both countries to return to their homes and the border safely. And in his speech to world leaders at the opening of the high-level general debates of the UN General Assembly, UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres stressed the need to find international solutions to the challenges facing the world. Civilians are paying the price in rising death tolls and shattered lives and communities. It is time for a just peace based on the UN Charter, on international law, and on UN resolutions. Meanwhile, Gaza is a non-stop nightmare that threatens to take the entire region with it. Look no further than Lebanon. We should all be alarmed by the escalation. Lebanon is at the brink. The people of Lebanon, the people of Israel, and the people of the world cannot afford Lebanon to become another Gaza. The international community must mobilize for an immediate ceasefire. Meanwhile, His Majesty King Abdullah II Ibn al Hussein delivered the following speech to world leaders at the opening of the high level general debates of the UN General Assembly. Now is the time to ensure the protection of the Palestinian people. It is the moral duty of this international community to establish a protection mechanism for them across the occupied territories. Forced displacement of Palestinians, which is a war crime. No country in the region benefits from escalation. We have seen that clearly in the dangerous developments in Lebanon over the past few days. This has to stop. Now, the National Security Advisor and Royal Guard Commander, His Highness Lieutenant General Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, met with the Minister of Interior, General Sheikh Rashid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa. His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad emphasized the critical role played by the Ministry of Interior and its personnel in maintaining Bahrain's security, its stability, and safeguarding the nation's achievements. He said that these efforts are carried out with great efficiency under the care of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa and the support of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa. The minister congratulated His Highness on winning the World Endurance Championship for the 160-kilometer race in Montpazier in France, wishing him continued success. He expressed appreciation to His Highness for his recognition of their efforts, reaffirming the ministry's commitment to advancing police work system through strategies aimed at enhancing performance, performance and operational efficiency. The first Deputy Chairman of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, Chairman of the General Sports Authority and President of the Bahrain Olympic Committee, His Highness Sheikh Khaled bin Hamad Al Khalifa, received the team who won the 17th Gulf Championship title for the first time in its history and the junior team who won the under-15 Gulf Championship title. His Highness praised the two Gulf achievements and emphasized that they are a reflection of the support received from His Majesty the King, His Royal Highness the Crown Prince Prime Minister, and His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa. He congratulated the players for their outstanding performance and fighting spirit that led them to achieve these two great results, expressing his pride in their high levels of sportsmanship. He emphasized that these achievements reflect the great progress achieved by Bahraini basketball at all levels, pointing out that this victory represents the culmination of the efforts of the Bahrain Basketball Federation, as well as the dedication and determination shown by the players in the competitions. He said that these successes reinforced Bahrain's position on the regional sports map and affirmed keenness to providing all support to the national basketball teams to achieve more successes. He, now His Highness then thanked all the players and the technical and administrative staff, wishing them success in upcoming tournaments.
The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Abd Latif bin Rashid Zayani, took part in the annual consultative meeting of the Council of the League of Arab States at the ministerial level. The meeting was chaired by the Minister of Foreign Affairs and expatriates of Yemen, chairman of the current session of the Council of the Arab League, Shaya Al Zindani. They discussed coordination between Arab countries on topics of the agenda of the UN General Assembly at its current session, in addition to the meetings and forums in which Arab countries will take part to promote joint Arab action. They also discussed the Palestinian-Israeli conflict, efforts to support the Palestinian cause, and ways to enhance Arab coordination and intensify communication with regional and international organizations in this regard. They discussed the continuing collective and individual Arab action to intensify efforts aimed at establishing an independent and sovereign Palestinian state and to work to reduce tension and prevent escalation that would drag the region into a destructive war, threatening regional security and stability. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Abd Latif Zayani, participated in a meeting convened by U.S. Secretary of State Anthony Blinken titled Advancing Sustainable Development Through Safe, Secure and Trustworthy Artificial Intelligence that was on the sidelines of the 79th session of the UN General Assembly. The meeting was attended by foreign ministers participating in the UNGA, heads of delegations and heads of permanent missions to the UN in New York. Blinken focused on the ability of artificial intelligence to find solutions to global development challenges, emphasizing the importance of ensuring the security of AI and the necessity of activating it safely to achieve sustainable development goals. Blinken highlighted the significance of promoting AI in partnership with the private sector and building the capacities of nations in AI in a beneficial and secure way. The meeting aimed at leveraging AI and managing its potential risks globally, as well as highlight U.S. efforts to support countries in building their AI ecosystems, how to leverage safe and reliable AI to help achieve the UN Sustainable Development Goals and drive inclusive and sustainable economic growth. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Abdel Latif Zayani, also met with the Greek Minister of Foreign Affairs, Georgios Gerapetritis, and they discussed their country's strong friendship, emphasizing the importance of enhancing bilateral cooperation across various fields to meet the aspirations of both nations and their peoples. The meeting addressed regional and international issues, including threats to security and stability, specifically focusing on the humanitarian situation in Gaza. They discussed efforts to achieve a permanent ceasefire, protect civilians, release hostages, and ensure the delivery of humanitarian aid to those in need. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Ablotiv Zayani, also met with the Estonian Minister of Foreign Affairs, Margus Tsaknaat, in Bahrain's mission in New York City. They discussed the strong friendship between their countries, highlighting the mutual interest in developing their relations across various fields to serve common goals. The meeting covered regional and international challenges, focusing on Arab and international efforts aimed at establishing peace and stability in the Middle East. The Minister of Foreign Affairs also met with the Minister of Foreign Affairs of the Philippines, Enrique Manalo. The meeting focused on strengthening their country's friendship relations and exploring ways to enhance bilateral cooperation across various fields to serve their common interests. They discussed regional developments, including the ongoing conflict in Gaza and other issues of mutual concern. The Minister of Housing and Urban Planning, Amna Rumayhi, expressed a commitment to enhancing the social housing sector, a crucial aspect of the country's comprehensive development process led by His Majesty the King with a follow-up of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Prime Minister. She said that within the framework of the Ministry's efforts to implement the directives of His Royal Highness to develop 500 services in 24 government agencies, the Ministry developed 28 housing services in coordination with the Ministerial Committee for Information and Communications Technology. 
She said that the developed housing services include 16 in the housing services affairs sector, in addition to three developed services in the engineering affairs sector and nine services provided by the housing bank to clients. She noted that the ministry worked on developing its website and the customer experience in all digital services, reducing the documents for services within the service level agreement. She said that the service of submitting a request to benefit from housing financing, Des Heal, included reducing the number of steps by only four and reducing the number of required documents from 16 to seven. The development of the right to dispose service after the electronic transformation also witnessed a reduction in the number of documents to four, while it previously required 13. The ministry also launched a maintenance service through its website, where it contributed to reducing the service of level agreement from 10 working days to just five and providing it electronically by 100%. She said that the ministry launched the inquiry service for expropriated properties in the Muharraq City Development Project as part of the Muharraq City Development Plan. She also said that the development aspects included implementing, implementing electronic connectivity with 10 government agencies within an integrated electronic system. The Minister of Sustainable Development and CEO of the Economic Development Board, Noor Bel Khulayf, participated in an interactive dialogue ahead on the, held on the sidelines of the UN Futures Summit. The dialogue, titled Towards a Shared Digital Future, Promoting Inclusive Innovation and Collaboration to Bridge the Digital Divide, was organized by the International Telecommunication Union and the UN Development Programme. The dialogue was opened by President Ala Karis of Estonia and President Dr. Mohamed Muizu of the Maldives, who emphasized the importance of intensified global efforts for inclusive digital transformation and the role of digital innovation in addressing global challenges and promoting sustainable development. El Khulev highlighted the importance of fostering collaboration and sharing expertise in digital transformation. She said that digital innovation is a key pillar in Bahrain's efforts to accelerate progress towards achieving sustainable development goals and advancing various economic and social sectors. The chairman of the Sunni Waqf Council, Dr. Sheikh Rashid bin Mohammed Al Hajri, received the Grand Mufti of India, Sheikh Abu Bakr Ahmed. The two sides discussed topics of mutual interest, particularly those that serve Islam and Muslims. The Grand Mufti of India expressed pleasure in meeting with Al Hajri and commended his efforts in promoting the values of Islam. In a new Bahraini achievement that strengthens Bahrain's position in the space sector at the international level, the National Space Science Agency announced that space engineer Yaqub al Ghassab won the 20 under 35 award presented by the International Association of Space and Satellite Professionals for its 2024 edition. And to speak more about this, we're now joined over the phone by space engineer, Mr. Yaqub al Ghassab himself. Hello, Mr. al Ghassab. Can you please tell us about the significance of this award on a global level? Hello, thank you for this opportunity. At the beginning, I would like to extend my sincere thanks to the National Space Science Agency, and in particular, His Excellency Mohammed bin Samar al Kaabi, Minister of Transportation and Telecommunications, and Chairman of the Board of Directors of NSA. I would like to express my deep gratitude to the executive management of the agency, represented by His Excellency Dr. Mohammed Al Asiri, who has consistently supported, motivated, and placed the trust in us as young, young Bahrainis capable of creativity and achievement. I also cannot forget the unwavering support and encouragement of my family. Uh, winning the 20 under 35 uh, Leaders Award presented by the SSPI represents the global recognition of the outstanding achievements of Bahraini youth in the field of space, communications, and satellites. This award enhances the global reputation of the winner and opens up career opportunities and collaboration networks within industry leaders. It also serves as an inspiration to future generations of engineers and scientists contributing to innovation and the progress in this field. This award is granted to young individuals aged between 18 and 35 who excel in the space sector through their academic
academic achievement, scientific research, and community initiatives. I received this award in recognition of my outstanding efforts in scientific research, having published 28 scientific papers in the field of space and technologies, conducted numerous workshops, and organized community events related to raising awareness about the importance of space science. Moreover, I distinguish myself academically by earning a master's degree in mechanical engineering with a specialization in space system technology, graduating with the first degree of honor. <coughs> Excellent. And what does this prestigious achievement mean to you? So yes, this award means a great deal to me, as it represents a sense of pride, especially since NSSA is the only Arab representative to win the award for the second consecutive year. It reflects the ability and competencies of Bahraini youth in achieving success, overcoming challenges, and excelling in this promising field. As you may know, this achievement comes despite the relatively recent establishment of the agency, which demonstrates the accelerated pace of progress in this sector within the Kingdom of Bahrain. Furthermore, this accomplishment came with a global competition with major countries that have been in the field of space for many years ahead of Bahrain. For Bahrain's air recognition in such a prestigious international platform is concrete proof of the exceptional capabilities and ambition of Bahraini youth. These consecutive achievements are just the beginning of a journey towards leadership and space exploration. And after all this and this achievement now, what are your aspirations and ambitions? So this achievement strengthens my determination to further develop my skills and pursue my ambitions in the field of space. It also motivates me to continue scientific research and increase my output by publishing more innovative studies that contribute to the development of this vital field. I also look forward to working on larger projects in the space sector and leaving a significant mark on advancing space sciences in the Kingdom of Bahrain. In addition, this achievement acts as a driving force to foster innovation and contribute to finding a new scientific and technological solution. I hope that this success serves as an inspiration to young Bahraini to invest in their talents and develop their potential in a way that aligns with the aspirations of our beloved nation and supports the path of scientific progress and innovation. Space engineer Mr. Yaqub Al-Ghassab, thank you very much for joining us and congratulations.